Okay, most of you have heard me talk about 299 Days, the book series. And I'm into the third book. And these are written by a gentleman by the name of Glenn Tate. And as I said, I've been mentioning these books. I really got attached to the characters in this book and really the storyline. I finally got him. Glenn Tate is here. I've been over to his booth a couple of times and he's been out um, chatting with folks and um, I, he's going to tell us he had a very cool experience. He just was interviewed with someone very cool and he'll share that with us. But I want him to tell us about his book series 299 Days and um, we'll talk more about this in the future but uh, I want to refer you to Glenn Tate 299 days I'll put links down below Glenn right. thanks 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 so much for uh, taking some time for an interview and I just found I never heard about 299 days until I listened to you being interviewed by John Jacob on Radio Free Readout and I'm very excited to read the series tell me about the series what how many books you've done where it's going in the future and um, share a little bit about that message of hope. Yeah, you bet. Thank you for having me, especially with the uh, the video technique we have to use here. Um, it's a 10-book prepper novel series. Um, all the books are written. Uh, books 1 through 6 have been released. Um, books 7 through 10 uh, will be coming out in the next few months. And uh, it's a book about me, um, a suburban slug, a guy who was just like a typical sheeple and figured some stuff out. I have a job. That's why I have this uh, video technique going because I don't want my identity out. job that allows me to observe government and um, my employer would not be uh, thrilled that we're talking, let me put it that way, and not be thrilled that I wrote the book. Books. Um, so it takes place um, when I'm Olympia, Washington, the state capital of Washington where I live, and um, uh, I prep over resistance from my wife. A lot of people find that the uh, the resistance from the wife and the and all that is a is a big thing. And by the way, this isn't ten books about me arguing with my wife. I mean, this is not Dr. Phil show. It's not like that because <laughs> uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't watch that. Um, and so uh, there's some resistance from her. There's an event, a uh, big kind of collapse, economic collapse event, uh, which I'm convinced is coming. And uh, my wife needs to come out to the cabin, the real life cabin um, where I am. I have friends out there, good friends. Uh, the team, they're, they're gun they're guys, people. they're all real people, and they're, they're normal civilians who have trained themselves, there's, there's nothing you know, weird about them, they're insurance salesmen and hospital technicians and just kind of normal guys, and I think that resonates with people because they see themselves in this group and they say, wow, you know, I don't have to have 10 of my SEAL Team 6 buddies to have a prepper team. No, you don't. I mean, you can do a whole lot with regular guys, and, and that's the whole point, because I'm a regular guy, I'm nothing special. And so uh, they go out to the cabin and they form up the community. That's one of the most important concepts of this entire book series, community. Guys, gals, you cannot do this by yourself. If you think you're going to be the lone wolf, I feel sorry for you because they'll probably never find your body up in the hills when you've died of a simple to treat, you know, cut or some infection or something like that. And so it describes how the main character, me, helps this community form up out around the cabin and how uh, the main character takes all the the skills that people have, the different skills, and 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 applies them and gets people working together. And it's not magic. It's not, um, hey everybody, let's uh, let's prepare for a collapse. And hey, let's go, you know, start a medical clinic. Okay, let's all do it. You know, it's not like that. There's resistance from people. And as as you read about how this community um, forms up, you're going to see. Okay, because it's kind of a template for something that could help you out there, you know, reading it, help form up a community. And you can say, you can see from this, well, there are going to be these kind of people that are going to have this kind of agenda, and here's some ways to maybe defeat that kind of agenda and get people pulling all, you know, on the same on the same uh, page. And so that's the community part, and uh, it ends with some thoughts about rebuilding. It's not a, a manual on how to rebuild a, a state or a or society after all of this, but it's uh, I guess maybe the beginning of a conversation about how things can get fixed. And you mentioned at the very beginning, this is hopeful. And it is hopeful because, yes, there's going to be bad stuff and there's going to be hard things to deal with and there's going to be a lot of tragedy. But in the end, and it's relatively quickly in my view, in the end, things do get fixed um, and they're better than they are now because they're going to be more sustainable and more permanently fixed. So 
That's why it's hopeful. Here's the bottom line on hopefulness. The title, 299 days. Why 299 days? That's the period of time from when the collapse happens until the uh, main character is going off uh, in a scene to the uh, inaugural ball for the new governor of the new state of Washington and things are starting to get rebuilt because the good guys have won and there's basically a, a new state constitution and all of that. So I think 299 days, yeah, that's a long, long period of badness, but guess what? It's not 299 years. And so, and so that's why I think it's hopeful and it's about community. It's about looking at a partial collapse. No other book that I know of talks about the utilities being on for the most part they go on and off and there being a variation on the kinds of levels of government services that are out there you just got to be interviewed with a very interesting and inspiring gentleman yes and um, I, I made the hair on my arm stand up when you shared that story with me can you just can you tell me um, who you talked to and I think you gave him a very meaningful gift yeah, Stuart Rhodes. Stuart Rhodes, the founder of Oath Keepers, who I hope all of your listeners know about. If you don't, OathKeepers.org. Oath Keepers is an organization of current serving and former serving military law enforcement and other first responders who take their oath to defend the Constitution seriously. And they understand it doesn't end when they're discharged from service. It's a lifetime oath. And they're going to keep their oath. That's where the name Oath Keepers comes from. It's all peaceful there's there's you know there, there are all kinds of stereotypes out there that are just not true and oath keepers is, is not one of those stereotypes so these are all decent men and women who are simply saying i'm keeping my oath and what the heck's wrong with that and why would that be controversial but it's a, it's a fantastic organization several of the characters in the book are real life oath keepers and um retired special forces guy an air force security forces guy and you've gotten inspiration from these guys from inspiration from them. i've talked to them and They've given me a, a ton of good ideas. There's a uh, there's a former police officer who uh, is fired because he exposes some corruption in his department, and he's fired, and he's he's a real guy, and and he's an oath keeper. And so you have all these good guys who are oath keepers, and one of the reasons that this is so hopeful is that I think there are going to be a ton of good men and women in uniform who are going to keep their oaths now. 48 hours, 72 hours, a week after the emergency starts, they're going to say, hey, I've just been ordered to take away a bunch of people's guns. I'm, I'm not doing that. And I think that good people in uniform will peel off in droves and do the right thing. And they're not going to make a big deal out of it. They're going to melt away. They're going to go back to their families, actually. I've, I've talked to law enforcement uh, in particular who say, we're going to do the best we can for as long as we can. When we can't do any good anymore, we're going back to our families. And unfortunately, everybody's on their own. I wish it weren't the case. Everybody out there had plenty of warning. They could have got their stuff together. They chose not to. And, you know, I'm just one man or one woman. What the heck am I going to do? And so it's... It's not pro-military or pro-law enforcement. It's certainly not anti-military or anti-law enforcement. I think it's just reality. They're good people in uniform. They're bad people in uniform. Yeah. All right, so um, Stuart Rhodes. Yeah, amazing. Uh, Stuart Rhodes, founder of Oath Keepers, hero of mine. And I don't have a lot of heroes, you know what I mean? It's, good I'm not heroes. I know, but I don't, yeah, I'm not a fanboy. I mean, I just, you know, And but he's an amazing guy. So he's here at this event, and I have the amazing honor of being able to do a joint interview with him on Radio Free Readout and How get cool to meet him. It was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. But here's the thing. You mentioned a special gift. Uh, there are proof copies of books, which are very, very rare, and they are the pre-production ones that are 99% final. There are three proof copies in the world of book number six of my book. And I have one of them. I brought it here. And book number six is dedicated to Stuart Rhodes because he inspired a lot of the real life characters in the book and so I wanted to dedicate the book to him and I'd never met him I didn't think I could get a hold of him not that he's a arrogant guy or anything it's just like he's probably getting a lot of emails and everything and I'm just a regular guy so I you gave, are just a regular guy I am a regular guy <laughs> I have a t-shirt that has a regular guy tab yeah. right instead of a ranger tab so anyway um, I gave him the book I explained that it's one of three proofs in the entire world and uh, signed it for him he was really, really touched by it. He couldn't believe it. 
it's not every day somebody dedicates a book to you and gives you one of the three yeah. proofs and it's the least I can do for him for all that he's done and so it was, it was a I hate to sound all mystical on you. It was a magic moment. It was really cool. Meant to be, though. Meant to be, which is a great segue into faith. I'm a Christian. Absolutely no apologies. I have a unique way of getting the word out about it because I grew up and uh, live in an extremely liberal place, um, Olympia, Washington, one of the most liberal cities in the entire country. And that's actually provable with <laughs> measurable data. Um, and um, I don't walk up to people and talk about it a lot because you will just drive people away and it's ineffective. It's ineffective. So I have to be subtle about it. And 299 days um, is subtle. I don't think I'm going to turn off anybody who is not already a Christian or doesn't want to hear about it. And um, people who are either Christian or are leaning that way or thinking about it will appreciate this book because they will see things that will communicate to them. I, I talk in the book about the outside thought is what I call it. I was trying to be neutral about it and not turn people away. The outside thought would kind of guide me. And I'm not talking about hearing voices. I mean, you're a doctor. If I hear voices, there's a diagnosis for that. So that's not going on. But it's the outside thought that guides me and... Um, it guides other people in the book um, and guides events. That's what I mean. It, it guides it me and guides events. And there's demonstrable proof uh, in my life about it. Um, the cabin in the book, I talk about how it was inherited and it was a miracle. It's all true. It's how it happened. It was it was miraculous. All these things in the book, me meeting this amazing team of guys that I talk about because they're all real. I think that's miraculous. And so God wrote this book. Um, I'm the guy at the keyboard. That's how I view it. So we're talking about 43 kernels, which I thought was a very cool um, story. Yeah, so um, I, I do 10 books. The publisher says we have 10 books here, and I say, oh, great. And then as we start to build out the books and put each one out, we wanted to increase the size of the book. So what we started doing was taking chapters from a previous book and adding them into a past book. So after we did that nine times, we ran out of stuff, and we needed a, a tenth book. So I needed to come up with a tenth book. Well, as I'm writing the first chapter, um, I talk about the main character going off to an inaugural ball, and the main character is an honorary colonel, the, the new Washington State Legislature. After all the bad stuff has happened and things are rebuilding, the new Washington Legislature is going to make him an honorary colonel. And there are 22 guerrilla leaders in the book and the main character is one of the guerrilla guys and so I started writing and there will be 22 colonels and the outside thought said 43 I thought 43 why would I put 43 down because there are 22 of them and then I, I chuckled to myself because the outside thought is always right and never never let me down and I just went with it so I typed 43 in there and so chapter one there were 43 colonels well fast forward two years now we need an, we need another book so what do we do well a book has about 43 chapters so now by something that God did a couple years ago telling me to put 43 in the in the first book now we've got the stage set perfectly to have 43 colonels and the colonels will be people who do some military things but a lot of normal people um, people who do some financial things that are helpful some political things so civilian normal people that have risen up and everyday done people the right thing. Okay. everyday people there are indeed some military people but it's essentially regular people who did extraordinary things one of them you'll like this um, is a nurse who who starts a hospital and treats everybody patriot loy patriot loyalist undecided doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to treat people. And she's a patriot, and she shows the community that the patriot way means that you help people, and you're not vindictive, and it's not a political game, and you're out. The, the patriot way works.